God bless you. Before we go any further into this uh, presentation, before we go any further into this presentation, I would like to have a word of prayer. Thank God for bringing us together again through this medium of the Three Messengers television channel. Eternal Father, I thank you so much for your goodness to us, for loving us, for caring for us, for treating us wonderfully as your children, as prov for providing for us day after day, for giving us life, because when if we have life, Lord, we have got everything. And because without life, we have got nothing and we have lost everything. So we thank you, Lord, that you have given us life. But the greatest quality of life that you have in store for us is the life given through your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The destiny, Lord, of eternal life. I thank you so much, Heavenly Father. Forgive us of all our sins and make us worthy to be counted among your chosen that will be in, the, in that everlasting, that everlasting kingdom. It's my prayer through your Holy Son's name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. So, friends, we have. What is their significance? What is the significance of musicians and entertainers in prophecy? Reading the book of Daniel and Revelation, we, we saw entertainers and musicians played a, a very important role. Some of the names that I've mentioned in some of my sketches are Taylor Swift, Usher, Eminem, Ariana Grande, Richard, Branson, you know, who, who is a merchant of the earth, by the way, Richard Branson, with his SpaceX, and Steve Harvey, Chris Brown, Elon Musk, which is one of the merchants of the earth. What role is the merchants of the earth and the entertainers, the singers and musicians have to do with prophecy? Beyonce. Elon Musk, leaders of the world, Emmanuel Macron, Richie Sunak of Great Britain, Vladimir Putin of Russia, Xi Jinping of China, Ursula van der Leyen of the uh, European Com Commission, Hispanic musical artists as such as Bad Bunny, Carol G, Romeo Santos, the question is, what do all of these people have in common? What is their relevance in Bible prophecy? I have been doing portraits of some of these people, as you have seen on my channel, on this channel rather. But my intent is to pose to these folks the importance of their re repentance before the coming of the Lord. We see in Revelation 18, how the merchants of the earth, such as the Walmarts, the Amazons, the, the Targets, the Bank of Americas, you know, and all the big retail giants and the big car makers of the world, the big motor car makers and truck manufacturers, you know, how they've got the power, the power will be given to them to deny or grant the power to purchase food, housing, clothes, whatever you need. 
that will be controlled by a centralized power. The beast power of revelation, that is. The, he will be able to take control of the monetary and economic system of every country and prevent those who were at the desire to obtain goods or services or grant such benefit to whom they wish. The banking systems of the world are slowly being centralized to come under one single power and complete control at the time of the Great Tribulation. Music is a powerful tool of control that is used by Satan. You know, we have seen our beyond say uh, how she, you know, has no bones in promoting the Satan, the symbols and and regalia of, of of Satanism. We have seen that, you know, and how music is being exploited by Satanists and by people of the spirit world to fight against the faith, the true word of God. So it's the true word of God against, against the powers of evil. Music and monetary policy is being designed by the, by, you know, the main federal reserve system now to become so, so fully centralized that every single commercial bank transaction will eventually go through the one single banking system. That is being done. I've seen that. I've read about that by policymakers. So it's not really fantasy. If you're well read and you read the, the news on the economy, you'll see that there's a move afoot to centralize the banking system where every transaction is accountable and go through one centralized banking system. So the role of musicians and entertainment, what role do they play in prophecy? We'll take a look at the scriptures and see how. Their actions will affect the people of God and those that follow after the beast's power. For those of us who are Bible students, we are aware of the very important role that music plays in worship. We are aware that music can be used in a negative way to manipulate and control a listening audience. Even Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, you know, of Nazi Germany, he is one of his tactics, one of his, one of his uh, ways of reaching his audience was through music. You know, here in America, we have seen politicians use music before their rallies, you know, while campaigning, political campaigning. And, you know, the racist language that they use to rile up their followers. You know, the racist language that they use and the, the more racist they get and the more vile they get, they believe that they look more favorable before the vilest kind of racists that are going to vote for them. So they believe that if they rile up that racist, vile individuals, those individuals to vote for them, that, 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 that addition, in addition to the day-to-day -day followers that go after them for and follow them that they believe that there's so many racist you know repulsive stupid you know the the the, the most obnoxious ca kind of racist will vote for them and will put them into office and will will give them the opportunity for leadership of of a great nation. They believe that. So what they do, they'll, they'll 
toss aside any form of morals that was inside their body to go and stoop to the lowest ebb in order to gain political power and control. But we are not going to go into too much into a political discussion because there is more at stake than politics, friend. The fact is that the secular musicians and entertainers of the Bible, you know, the entertainers of the kingdom of Babylon, the musicians were used by King Nebuchadnezzar were manipulated by Nebuchadnezzar to play a message through music to listeners in his audience. And when that music is played, they were the required to bow before that golden image that came King Nebuchadnezzar built. So that is the role of the musicians as in the days of Daniel the prophet, they are going to be used. Those musicians are going to be used. And they are going to be used to manipulate people. And their messages are going to be used by the beast power as they did in the time of Daniel. To bow down to the present day beast and his image. Because there is a present day beast and his image with plans to persecute God's people. And mus this is how musicians are going to be used to, sp to help to spread their message. As in the time of Daniel, the entertainers and musicians are going to be manipulated by the merchants of the earth. Because the entertainers and the musicians, where, where do they get most of their money? from the common people, but who set them up? Who gave them all those loans and all those promotions to do their business? It comes from the merchants of the earth. So the merchants of the earth are going to give them what they need to manipulate a following, to go and follow the beast and to follow after Satan. That is the, the, will be the role because in Daniel, the, the, the happenings in Daniel is prophecy of the day and a reflection of what will happen in time to come. But not very long from now because we have seen even in the heavens, as is mentioned in Matthew 28. Sorry, Matthew 24. You know, these signs. The creators and purveyors of secular music were used by King Nebuchadnezzar to play at a ceremony in which he was about to dedicate a golden image to, to his false god. And certainly, if God being worshipped, the God that's being worshipped is not the Almighty God, not the Almighty God of heaven, then you are worshipping Satan if you are not worshipping God. Simply the worshipping of gods made of metal and wood and stone is the very same thing as satanic worship. There's no in-between. You either worship God or the devil. So if you're, you're worshipping images, if you are worshipping images, if you are worshipping images, then you are worshipping you're worshipping Satan if you're worshipping images. If you are worshipping images, you are worshipping Satan. The book of Ezekiel 28 verses 13 to 15, the Bible describes Lucifer also known as the devil and Satan as a very beautifully created angel and gifted musician. It states, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and diamonds had covered Lucifer. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald. The, the, 
carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee. <coughs> Sorry. Thou hast been in the garden in Eden. Let me read that over. Thou hast been in the garden of Eden. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou hast upon thy, the, the, the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. So we could see that by the description given, we could see that Lucifer, Satan, was a beautifully created angel. It's not the goat, you know, that goat head did figure with those long horns uh, on top of his head. You know, that's a fiction of man's Im imagination. If man believes that that's what Satan looked like, they're fooling themselves. The most beautiful one of the, he's one of the most beautiful creatures ever created with diamonds all type of things that covers his body that's what the, the scriptures are here saying in the book of ezekiel just as in the time of daniel when the hebrew boys refused to bow down before nebuchadnezzar with his profane music you know he ref they refused to bow down before Nebuchadnezzar and the abominable music of the world that was played as a prelude to the worship of the golden image of Satan. They refused to obey and was thrown into the fiery furnace by King Nebuchadnezzar. And the people of God will be ordered to do the very same at the time of the end. The beast's power under the direction and control of satan and some of god's children will pay with the ultimate price with their lives but they will be sealed by the holy spirit and will inherit the kingdom of god revelation makes the matter of death due to disobedience to the beast power in daniel's time just as in the book of revelation you know, so the book of Daniel, you know, death was the decree for bowing to the beast. The beast power, which is Nebuchadnezzar, was the beast power because he was the first beast. The, he was, was the lion that had eagle's wings, so symbolized, so Nebuchadnezzar was the first beast. And the image that he provided was that gigantic golden image which he constructed that hovers over the great kingdom of Babylon and commanded everyone to bow down to it. And it will be the same that will happen in the time of the end where this beast power, symbolized by the dragon, Satan, which is a religio-political power, it's a religious political power, church power, the prominent church power who had persecuted the saints throughout the ages. From 457 AD to 1798, that great beast power that did crusades and slaughtered millions of the saints, that grace great beast power will put forth its head again, its satanic head again to do the very same to the people who will not bow down to its image. 
the image that it will provide in the time of the end is the, is the Sunday law. The Sunday law is the image that you're going to bow to. That Sunday law contains the mark of his indignation, of God's indignation. The mark of the beast is within that Sunday law, within the Sabbath law that God has ordained from creation as rest for his people. Contained in that law is the seal of the living God. So disobedience, when you go through, I'm asking you to go through the presentations I've done before. I've done about three or four presentations on this side about the origins of Sunday observance. And I invite you to go and look at those videos that refers to the history of the Sabbath. But also, I'd like to refer you to go and to look at the videos based on the Protestant Reformation, the history of the Reformation, and the, the, you could say the pioneers of the Protestant Reformation who fought with Rome and the papacy, with Rome and the papacy against the, 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 all those indulgences, the, those laws that they have, again, and how they change God's laws, especially the one that requires us not to bow before gold, before any form of images, any form of images. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor serve them. Remember the Sabbath day. So they have changed both the first and the fourth commandment split the first one in two and got rid of the one that commands us not to bow before images because a part of and of their religion and their religious philosophies the, the worship of mary the idolization the idolizing of mary as a deity so they got rid of the, those commandments the commandment that commands us not to bow before golden image, before any form of image, whether it be golden or not, whether it be made of wood or stone, doesn't matter. God commands us not to bow before any, any statues of Peter or Paul, the Virgin Mary, any of those type of worship is an abomination unto God. We must worship and bow before Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Father, and the Holy Spirit, the true and living God. You know, uh, the, the, the coming of the end of this beast power, the coming of the end of this beast power is at, is at a nearing end. And the beast power will not be able to conquer forever and to keep God's children down. There, there is the coming of the Lord with which we look at. Revelation makes the matter of death due to disobedience to the beast's power in Daniel's time, just as in the book of Revelation, where the saints of God will be killed by disobeying and refuse to bow down and worship the beast. The Hebrew, Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace. They were thrown in the fiery furnace. When you read Daniel chapter 3, you know, and onwards, it will tell you of the story of the Hebrew boys being thrown in the fiery furnace and Jesus himself, the one like the Son of God, likened unto the Son of God, came down and rescued the Hebrew boys. And Nebuchadnezzar had to run to them and to, to take them out of that fiery furnace and through all of those guys that betrayed the prophets of God. The Hebrew boys were themselves thrown into the fire. So the people who fight against God's children, 
the people who are vexed with them because they are preaching his word and keeping his commandments. Their destiny will be a big lake of fire just as in the days of Daniel. The evil men that plotted against the three Hebrew boys themselves were thrown into a lake of fire. You know, I can I can look at in Daniel's time in Daniel's Daniel in, you know in Revelation in Revelation thirteen verse eleven to fifteen it states, and I beheld another beast came out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake like a dragon, <laughs> and he exercised exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused at the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire came come down from heaven to earth in the sight of men. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should not make that they should make an image to the beast which had which had the wound by the sword and did live there was a time when this beast power while it, he, he was persecuting the children of God during the Protestant Reformation, that this beast power, the papal power, was taken into captivity in 1798 and imprisoned and died in prison. That was a time when that it is referring to where the beast received a wound. But in, in about the year 1929, that, that beast power gained prominence again by the what is known as the Lateran Treaty, the Lateran Treaty or Lateran Pact, where the papal power received, was restored and received nationhood, nation status, the smallest nation on earth. So at that time, the power of the beast was restored. But from then until now, the, 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 that desire for power and prominence did not die. That when the, the, the beast power was restored, that, that power and prominence became, you could say, larger and larger and was increased. And the desire for political power and to influ the influence of world leaders and the control of the world. The desire to control the world continued, continued by the Roman power, by the papal power. The power of the Pope, when the Pope was taken into captivity, was restored. And that power and prominence, we have seen it around the world now, trying to you. To, to literally unite all religions, all Protestant religions, and to bring an end to the Protestant Reformation. To bring an end to the pro pro Protestant Reformation that, that gained more popularity and fervency in 1517 by the great pion the late great pioneer Mar Martin Luther. People like Martin Luther, Ulrich Zwingli, Ulrich Zwingli, Martin Luther, you know, those were the primary. John Knox, John Calvin, just to name a few of them, you know, just to name a few of the great pioneers of the Protestant Reformation who were persecuted for the name of God. And so 
was as it was in their time, so shall it be in the time of the end. So, you know, I, I've told you of the experience with King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, how he used the musicians of his time to, 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 to present a message to Baal, to a golden image, to a golden image for the people to bow down to. And it's the same thing that is going to happen in the last days. It, the days of the of the great persecution, in the days of the beast and his image, they shall be used in, in in a similar manner to convey a message of conformity that people should conform. These musicians will be used, so I am highlighting them to let you know that they shall be used by the beast power to send a message to send a message to us the followers of God that we should conform we should conform or we shall perish if we do not conform but God will rescue his saints all his saints will not be banished through death the powerful God of heaven will rescue his saints. The powerful God of heaven will rescue his saints. You know, it, I'm going to read a, a, uh, A part of the Holy Scriptures. You know, the kingdom, the king of Babylon, you know, after all that happened, he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. You know, and as the children of God did, you know, they refused to, to, uh, bow down to that big golden image that Nebuchadnezzar made. You know, read Daniel chapter 3 and onwards. Let us pray for wisdom to make the right choices of our sources, you know, of music, our sources of music. It is well known that singers, you know, I was talking about Beyonce and how she she used the regalia of the satanic symbols and her music is really sound like she's paying homage to another you know person to an, to a, to an unseen power you know she she boasts of um, being overtaken by sasha fierce a person who takes charge of her during our musical performances, musical re renditions, you know. So Nebuchadnezzar was thrown out, sorry, into the, into the bushes for seven years as punishment. There's always a punishment, you know. He was thrown into the bushes for, for punishment for the persecution of God's children. Of going into Jerusalem, seizing God's children, bringing them into slavery, using God's golden vessels irreverently with uh, with profanity. You know, he had done so many things that God cursed him and let him eat grass like a wild beast and grow hairs on his back like a wild beast. For seven years, he was cursed until he be became sane and he was restored. Read the entire book of Daniel and it will tell you a lot about Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, you know, his, his grandson Belshazzar and, you know, the other people that ruled the kingdom of Babylon. I mean, you know, 
Cyrus. Cyrus the Great overthrew Babylon after that because Babylon was, Babylon was doomed to destruction because of the, it, its state. And God likened the world today as in the state of Babylon because of the, the really wickedness. It was such a wicked nation. Because as Nebuchadnezzar came, you know, you could say he abdicated in some way from his throne. Belshazzar, which I believe was the, a crown prince. You know, he acted as king for Nebuchadnezzar. And he took the, the golden vessels from that, that is from the temples of God that they seized. When they went into Jerusalem, when they captured those golden vessels, and he used them, he he, he used them for 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 party and his allegiance that he's paying to the to the to Beelzebub, you know, to the worship of his false gods, and he he literally, you could say, you know, he 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 he. he Files God's vessels and defile himself, and God tossed him from the throne. That very night, he, he at that party that he used God's vessels in an irreverent manner, in an unholy manner. His life was required of him, and his kingdom was overthrown. The Midian, the king, and the Cyrus, king of Persia, overthrew him. The Medes and the Persians took his kingdom away from him. And God made that happen. And it's the same thing that's going to happen to the beast power. You know, because the beast power is going to burn. It's going to be overthrown. This kingdom, we read, read Revelation 18 and, and it will tell you what became of the merchants of the earth. You know, the merchants of the earth, what became of them. You know, for instance, in Revelation 13 verse 11, it tells and I beheld another beast coming out of earth, and he had two horns, horns like a lamb, and spake like a dragon. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire came down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they sh should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. So the wound I told you about of the papal power being restored is that wound. And he had power to give life unto the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So that is going to be be a, there is going to be a death decree for the children of God who refuse to be obedient to the false Sabbath and to worship, to bow down to the beast and his image. You know, uh, as the children of God, we must resist the voice of Satan that is conveyed through secular music. Music that glorifies and satisfies us, but has nothing to do with Jesus our Savior. Let us pray for wisdom and make wise choices of our sources of music and using the insignia of Satan or Baphomet and doing rituals of Satan with their music. Be careful of those kind of singers whose music we listen to because we could be feeding such music into our souls and by doing so we invite demons to come in our souls you know so i'm gonna thank you very much for 
watching. I'm thanking you very much for for viewing this channel to, to, to today. Thank you so much for viewing this channel. I'm going to read for you Revelation eighteen, a part of Revelation eighteen, and you will see you will see from Revelation eighteen what will become of the beast's power. What will become of the beast's power? And what will become of the merchants of the earth who allow themselves to be controlled by the beast power, the rich men, the great retailers, the great manufacturers of, of all these cell phones and all these food items and all these electronics and all these beverages. You know, the Revelation chapter 18 tells you what will become of the kingdom of, of the the world today as it was as it being described as in a state of Babylon standing afar off for the fear or of her tor torment reading from verse 10 in Revelation 18 alas alas the, that great city Babylon that mighty city for in one hour the, the, is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall reap and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. That is an economic collapse. That's an economic collapse the Bible is talking about. The, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of the most precious wood and brass and iron and marble and the cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and the souls of men there there will be slavery at the coming of the lord before the lord comes there will be slavery but i believe it's a different kind of slavery it's mental slavery and it's gonna be economic slavery people will be working for next to nothing and it will get worse by the day because even now we're seeing people are living a life similar to that of slavery and earning wages that doesn't go very far. The wages they earn will not worth by the end of the year what it was worth at the beginning of the year. It it could have bought, it could have brought, you could have said it could have it, it could have bought more, much more. A year and a half ago than it could today and that is what you call inflation the inflationary spiral is out of control for food items for food items and what a hundred dollar could have bought a year and a half ago it may be on the it may be able to buy on the maybe a half or a third of what it can buy today in some cases so the that part of the scripture i've just read is talking about an economic instability and collapse of the world's economies and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. 
and the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment and weeping and wailing they will be crying because of their failure and because of their loss of money because they worship money and think that money could give them eternal salvation For in one, and alas, at last, that great city, in verse 16, in fine linen and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, At last, at last, that great city wherein were made rich and had ships in the sea by reason of her coastline, for in one hour is she made desolate. It will be a street, a state of desolation in all nations. Or the economic powers of the world it will re receive a state of it will reach a state of desolation where they can, can they will not be able to trade anymore god will pour his seven last plagues his seven last plagues read revelation 15 to 17 and they will tell you about the plagues that god is gonna pour out on the beast and his image and those who follow after them with this obedience to the fall sabbath the S sunday sabbath the power the power of those plagues is unspeakable is you could say is beyond human comprehension the suffering that they are gonna cause and this is a part of the suffering the after effects of those plagues where the sea become as blood and everything dries up and the cities became desolate and start to burn god is gonna bring that the book of revelation does not lie god's words do not lie because the very same activities that are taking place around the world in israel in Russia, Ethiopia, in Haiti, and other parts of the world, Burkina Faso, you know, French West Africa, all these nations in turmoil and overthrowing their puppet leaders who were subservient to the powers of the beast in Europe, those beastly countries that followed, follow and wallow after the the beast these people have shaken off that tyranny that slavery that had them into subjection to the powers of france they've shaken that off because they want their freedom not to be dominated anymore by these men of europe so they have shaken that off you know and they cast dust on their heads. These are the merchants of the earth and they will cry like babies when they are losing all this money that they work for. And thou shalt rejoice, rejoice over her, thou heavens and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God, God hath avenged you on her. So God has taken revenge for his children, for his prophets, that the beast power had persecuted and will cause that power to suffer. So God is saying that. And the read in, I'm going to read verse 21 and 22 of, eight, of chapter 18, and then we'll close. And a mighty angel took a stone. This is what the hand of, all the music, the vile and profane music 
that is played nowadays on radio by some of the people that I've drawn, or that I've, whose portraits I've done. This is what has, will become of their music. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying thus, with violence shall the great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all, at all. And the voice of harpers, musicians, and, and of pipers, and of trumpeters shall be heard, heard no more at all in thee. The, the, that's what are going to happen to the to those uh, lyricists, musicians, and all of these people, vocalists, who practice their craft. They shall be heard no more at all in Babylon, and no craftsman, nor whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard, saying no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. And by sorceries were all nations deceived. So you see sorcery magic, evil practice, demonic and satanic worship, and rituals, the sorcerers, they, because they are the sorcerers, those merchants, that are pushing their pill, pushing their pill, their elixir, their elixir for the, the disease that they, the very same individual, created over these past few years that killed over a million people. Their elixir. The Bible said these sorcerers were all deceived and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. So they are going to pay for persecuting God's children. For doing unjustly to God's children. And to persecute God's children for obeying his Sabbath day. In, you could say, exchange for a false Sabbath day that they have created. Which is embedded, that false Sabbath, which is embedded the mark of the beast. And the true Sabbath day, which is em embedded the seal of the living God. You know, so all that phenomena will take place with the final destruction of the world and nations, the nations of the systems and the rulership and system, the world rulers of the systems of Babylon, because they will all be, be combined in power together under this beast power we will see his, his destruction at the end of time. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to learn more about you, to understand your great prophecies, Lord. Let us pray constantly as you open our minds and our understanding, as we study your words fervently from day to day. May we understand that thy coming is very, very near. We have seen the signs in the wars in Israel, in, 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 in Gaza. We have seen the signs of the Russia-Ukraine war. We have seen the signs of the earthquakes in Turkey, Pakistan, where tens of thousands of people have died. We have seen tornadoes and floods throughout the world, cyclones. We've seen death in India and other places. And we're still asleep. We're not taking note 
of these great way marks that are fulfilling. We have not changed our ways, Lord, but we should pray and we ask thee for repentance. We ask thee for forgiveness of all our sins. And those who are within the hearing of our voice, may they all repent. May they all be baptized with the water and of the spirit. May they all be baptized. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I thank you very much for indulging and for allowing me to do this presentation in Jesus' name. So, please join us again for the next presentation that will be posted. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Please subscribe. Subscribe so you may know when we have posted a new presentation. Like and share our videos. Like and share our art. Because our art will be a constant. You know, the art presentation and the portrait presentation. We will begin this a series of presentation with the, some of the great pioneers of the Protestant Reformation will be presented in the form of art. So I'll, I'll be sketching some of these great pioneers of both the Adventists, the history of the Seventh-day Adventism in our world and, and in the United States. And we'll be drawing some of those great pioneers you know, so we hope you will end, you'll sit back and enjoy and invite your friends to see and those who love the world of art to come and en enjoy and see some of these great sketches, some of these artistic works in both format of paintings on canvas. We're going to do some oil painting and we're going to do some uh acrylic on canvas paintings oil on canvas acrylic on canvas and we're gonna also do some pastel and pen and ink work and pencil work and we're gonna use art as a medium